I've entitled this talk, Legacy Eyes. Legacy Eyes, because I propose that contained in this Bible story are three actions that if you and I proactively apply in our life, I propose that these actions are going to help you nurture a legacy that will produce fruitful dividends. And so if you have your Bible open to Luke chapter 18, I'm going to start reading at verse 35. And as always, as we read, try to picture the scene in your mind. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind beggar was sitting beside the road. When he heard the noise of the crowd going past, he asked what was happening. They told him that Jesus the Nazarene was going by, so he began shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, the people in front yelled at him. But he only shouted louder, son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and ordered that the man be brought to him. As a man came near, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, he said, I want to see. And Jesus said, all right, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Instantly, the man could see. And he followed Jesus, praising God. And all who saw it praised God too. You know, as most of you know, in Jesus' day, if you were any kind of a teacher or a mentor or a coach, it was sort of the, the common practice of that day to, to, to walk and talk. You know, there would be these teachable moments along the road that a teacher might point out, and then he would use that sort of that, that object or that experience to, to, you know, create this story or this, this, this connection to spiritual things. And so here's what we read. Really, Jesus is, that's what's happening here. People are following along with Jesus. On the side of the road, we're told is a blind beggar who hears some commotion, some, some crowd noise, and he's curious by what he hears. Now remember, he's blind, but he's not what? He's not deaf. So he asks the question, what's going on? What's happening? Jesus of Na the Nazareth, or Jesus the Nazarene, he is told, is passing by. Now, there's no indication that this blind beggar has ever met Jesus before, but by his response, the call out to Jesus seems to indicate that he's obviously heard about Jesus, hasn't he? He's likely heard about Jesus' ability to heal people. Again, he's blind, but he's not what? He's not deaf. So immediately he starts to do what? Well, he starts to do what you and I likely would have done had we been in his sandals. He starts to call out, doesn't he? Remember, he's blind, but he still has his voice. He may be handicapped, but only with his eyesight. And so with his voice, he starts to yell, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now don't miss this. This blind beggar knew his history and his theology. By calling Jesus the son of David, this blind beggar was showcasing his understanding of the biblical stories of how God the Father had promised to one day send to Israel a Messiah, a king who would come in the lineage and the family tree of the king of, of David, of King David. And so by giving Jesus the title, son of David, son of David, this blind beggar was declaring his belief that Jesus is the Messiah. Friends, this is a bold declaration of faith, which is one reason I propose Jesus' response to him. Because Jesus always responds positively to faith. Let me repeat that. Jesus always responds positively to faith. So personalize this. You may be somebody who does not know that much about the Bible. 
You may be somebody who may not even have a long history with the church, which, and while those things are helpful really for us to maybe live a fruitful life, what is even more important than maybe Bible reading or church going is exercising just a little bit of faith. Friends, when you and I choose to lean upon the one who has the power to change things, good things happen. Would you write this down? Truth number one in your app notes. My current circumstance does not determine my final destination. My current circumstance does not determine my final destination. So the action that you and I can practically practice out of this truth, action number one in your notes, is to visualize where you want to be, not where you currently are. In order to live your life with legacy eyes involves visualizing where you want to be, not on where you currently are. So, if you want to have a better marriage, you visualize it. What does that look like? If you want to have a better relationship with your kids, a better relationship with God's help, focus on that. What would a better healthier relationship with your kids look like? What does a good relationship, how does it function? You want your business to be successful? Do you want your health to improve? Visualize what that looks like. What dreams has God placed on your heart? What aspirations drive you on? Visualize where you want to be instead of focusing on where you currently are. You see, why is that true? It's because my final destination does not, or my current destination does not determine my final destination. You know, years ago, and I've shared this story with with you before, I was invited to do some leadership training with our Costa Mesa Fire Department some red helmet training. Now, if you know anything about the fire department and how it works, when there's a scene and there's an emergency, the the fire personnel will show up on, 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 on site and there will be one individual who's wearing a red helmet. They're the captain. They're the on site commander. They're the person who's making the call. They're the chief of the, of, of the incident, so to speak. And so I was in this room. There were about, as I think about the tables, there were probably 18 individuals from our fire department who were there to get training, who were all going to be applying to be a captain, to be a red helmet wearing captain. And one of the things that I told them in our leadership conversation is I told them, I said, as you interview for this position... As you strive to impress really these other red helmet captains and chiefs who are going to be in the room with you, you need to answer the questions as if you already are wearing that red helmet. You got to act like you've already been there. You got to live in the moment as opposed to pretending, which is a reality, but as opposed to being an applicant for the position. Are you with me? You need to be already in that post. You already need to be operating as if you already are wearing that helmet, even though you're not. But that's oftentimes the difference between success and failure. You focus on where you want to be, not on where you currently are. And so when you get discouraged by maybe a lack of progress, that's okay because I'm not here now. My mind, I'm already here across the finish line. Act like you've already been there. It's a subtle shift, brothers and sisters, in our mindset. But it is impactful. That's why I propose... When Jesus asked this blind beggar what he wanted, his response was quick and easy. I want to see, he said. 
This blind beggar had already visualized in his mind what an improved situation would look like for him. Sisters and brothers, to live our life with legacy eyes requires this understanding, truth number one, that with God's help, my current circumstance does not determine my final destination. Truth number two. A second truth I propose that this Bible story teaches that we can see showcased here with this blind beggar is how opportunity advancement builds on situational awareness. Opportunity advancement builds on situational awareness. Verse 36, look at it, tells us that as this blind beggar is sitting on the side of the road, he hears the crowd noise, right? The buzz of the conversation that apparently is being generated by Jesus' approach. Jesus, by this time in his ministry, he's on his way to the cross. So by this time in his ministry, we know he's one popular dude. People are pumped up, which is why there's this buzz with his approach. Now, with a show of hands, how many of you watched last weekend's Super Bowl on TV? Most of you? Okay. You know what my biggest frustration was with the Super Bowl broadcast this past week? In fact, I almost tr stopped watching the game after the second quarter. I was so frustrated. My biggest frustration with the telecast was the number of times that the camera focused on Taylor Swift. Any Swifties in the house? Okay. And my daughters love Taylor Swift and I like her music. But I counted 12 times that the camera focused on Taylor Swift. Swift. In fact, I, I was so frustrated by the end of the game that I didn't even watch the trophy presentation because I was confident that there was probably going to be some more Taylor Swift footage. Listen, here's my point. Why all the TV coverage of Taylor Swift? It's because she's a popular mu music artist right now. Why all the buzz with Jesus as he walked along the road to Jericho? Because he was the favorite, you know, favorite, what do you call it? Fruit, flavor of the day. He was popular. His, his social ministry was, 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 he didn't have Facebook or TikTok or whatever those things are out there. He was the guy. He was the Taylor Swift, if you will, of his day. And that's why there was this budge, buzz. And so to this blind beggar's credit, he didn't change the channel. Good on him. Rather, he paid attention to what was going on around him. You see, he had learned this lifetime, really his lifetime of begging had honed his skill of listening. Had it not? Verse 36, look at it. It says, he asks what's happening. He seeks help. He solicits help from those around him. And once he learns that Jesus is approaching, verse 38 tells us that he starts to what? He starts to scream. He starts to shout. His situational awareness leads him to act. Now personalize this. I wonder how often God is active around us but we miss it. I wonder how often we are so focused on our own situation and our own problems that we miss God's invitations that are right there in front of us. He's just saying, look up. Look up. Practice some situational awareness. I'd like for you on the count of three to say out loud together the phrase, look up. You ready? One, two, three. Look up. Look up. Friends, I propose this Bible story teaches us that to live with legacy eyes requires not only, really, it requires me not to only have an inward focus, but it requires me to have an 
outward focus. Are you with me? Opportunity advancement builds on situational awareness. Look up. So let's pray a prayer together. Okay, another prayer. Hands open. Deep breath in. We're just going to get ourselves in a position of receptivity. Inhale, hold it. Exhale. Now pray this. Say, Heavenly Father, please help me to be aware of your activity around me. One more time. Say that again. Heavenly Father, please help me to be more aware of your activity around me. Good. Now write this down. Truth number three. Dream makers and dream killers often operate in the same orb. Dream makers and dream killers often operate in the same orb. In this Bible story, we read that upon hearing the news of Jesus' approach, that this blind beggar begins to call out, asking Jesus to have mercy on him. And the Bible writer, here in verse 20 or 39, tells us that as this beggar clamors for Jesus' attention, that the crowd is excited for him and they encourage him to keep on shouting, right? Is that what we read? Wrong. No, what are we told? We're told that when this blind beggar starts calling out to Jesus, what's the crowd's response? Be quiet. They yell, it says. Stop making such a ruckus. Hush up, beggar. Jesus doesn't have time for you. But rather than listen and submit to the crowd's criticism, how did this blind beggar respond? Verse 39 tells us what? He shouted louder, doesn't he? And the Greek translation of this response here, it's important that it tells us that as this man, it suggests to us that as he begins to scream, it's almost like this animal-like desperation. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. This blind beggar understood that this was likely his one shot at being healed and he was not going to let the opportunity pass him by. Brothers and sisters, dream makers and dream killers often operate in the same orb. And so the invitation for you and me is don't listen to those dream killers. Listen to the dream maker. I think the invitation for those of us who want to live our life with legacy traction is not to focus on our obstacles, not to focus on our predicaments, but rather focus our eyes on the obstacle crusher. Truth or action number three. Friends, to live our life with legacy eyes, to live into the reality of a brighter future, don't focus on your obstacle, put your focus on the obstacle crusher. Don't focus on your limitations, focus on Jesus' capacity. Don't focus on what you can't do, rather focus on what he can do. Are you with me? Why? Because Jesus is the ultimate dream maker. Just ask this blind man who received his sight. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. God's word is for you. And I propose that God didn't just put this story in the Bible because it was cute and random. No, I propose that God intentionally put this story in the scriptures so that you and I would, would take heed from that. 
I propose that God included this story because he wants you and me to know that in the same way that Jesus has the capacity to change the trajectory of this blind man by giving him his sight, his physical sight, so too does Jesus have the capacity to step into your situation. The question is, will you let him? Will you invite him? Will you call out to him? Are you hungry enough to push away the negative people in your life and focus solely on Jesus and upon what he can do? Friends, some of you need to stop listening to your critics. Some of you need to stop listening to the people in your life who are grumpy. Because, you know, grumpy people are only happy when other people are grumpy. Listen, I don't know about you, but I don't have time for grumpy people. And I'm just going to go on record here that if you're negative, I don't want to be around you. And I'm going to spend a very little of my time with people who are negative. Life is too short to focus on what can't be done. I want people in my life who focus on what can be done. Who focus on the positive, not the negative. And so I challenge you, even as I challenge myself, take an honest look at your heart and ask yourself the question, am I a critic? Do I have a critical spirit? And I would challenge you to that if you identify any kind of a critical spirit within you, that you would repent of that. And with God's help, that you would say, God, help me not to be a critical spirit, spirit or a critical person. Because brothers and sisters, the truth is that if you're someone who, who approaches life with criticism and approaches stuff with criticism, there's a strong chance that you're holding people back. Just like this crowd was holding back potentially this blind beggar. Praise God that this blind beggar didn't listen to the shushers. Is that a message that some of you need to hear today? Do you need to stop listening to the shushers? And if you're a shusher, with God's help, stop being one. Change the script. Please. You know, in faith, brothers and sisters, ask God to, to surround you with people who will encourage you and who will help you grow. That's one of the purposes of the church, is it not? It doesn't mean that we don't maybe correct, lovingly correct people from time to time, but just don't focus there. Don't live there. Look for the good. There's enough bad in this world. Help people each other grow. And so let's, let's finish this conversation. Let's land the plane with one final prayer. Okay, so put everything away. Those of you at home, just put everything down. Open the palms of your hand upward. It's just open. It's just a place, a po posture of receptivity. And as David comes up and joins me on the stage, let's go to a time of prayer. Just take a deep breath again. Just inhale. Just kind of hold it. Exhale. Open your heart, open your mind, open your hands. Now pray this in your heart. Say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me and protect my heart from discouragement when change doesn't come as quickly as I would like. Jesus, in this prayer, I declare my desire to be a person who lives with legacy eyes. It's in your name that I ask these things, and I pray, and everybody said, Amen. Would you stand, palms open, palm raised. Brothers and sisters, I proclaim and I bless you today to be a person who lives with legacy eyes. I proclaim this blessing in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen and amen. Amen.